Flourish. My name is Joanne and I have three wonderful friends with me. And you may be wondering, how many wonderful friends do I have? I am blessed. I have so many great friends. And you know, we all love Jesus and we all go all around the world telling people how much we love Jesus. And I will say this, all of us have a great love for women. We have a desire to see women set free in Jesus. That has been our heart, um, all of us. And so we want you to know, ladies out there, we love you and we care about you and we are praying for you. Well, today we wanna to talk about a subject that maybe you can relate to. And we've titled this series or this episode, a label that I never thought I would have. Have you been thrust on a label? Has a label been thrust on you that you never thought you would have? Perhaps you're a widow, or maybe you're a divorced woman, or maybe you're a single woman, or maybe you're a single parent, and you never thought that label would be attached to you. Well, you know, we live in a broken world, and all of us people are broken. And so because of that, things happen that we never thought would happen, things that we never wanted to happen. But the good news is Jesus can redeem anything. And instead of sticking us with a label, when we come to faith in Jesus, he gives us a new name. He gives us a new identity. He's done that for us and he wants to do that for you. So come join us as we chat today about this topic. So say hello, friends. Hello. Hi, hello. Hey, everyone. Mm. Glad to be here. You know, God's, <clears throat> excuse me, God's original plan was for marriage to last forever, for parents to parent together. But again, we live in a fallen, broken world, so that doesn't always happen. Marriage and family and children, all of that is God's masterpiece. But because it's God's masterpiece, it also becomes Satan's target. Satan wants to destroy anything that God has designed. And yet, what Satan means for evil, the Bible tells us God will use for good. So the worst circumstance in your life, the worst circumstances in our life, God can take those very things and turn them around to something beautiful. He can take the ashes in our life and create something beautiful from them. Does that get you excited? Does that give you hope? I sure hope so, because God's done that for all of us, hasn't he? Let's start off with a verse from the Bible, Lisa. I believe you've got Isaiah 43, um, one through three. Would you read that for us? This is such a beautiful passage of scripture. Isaiah 43, one through three, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not for I have redeemed you. I've summoned you by name, you are mine. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. And when you pass <clears throat> through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Mm -hmm. And the flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel and your Savior. Mm -hmm. Isn't that such a beautiful verse? One of the words in there that I love, ladies, is the word through. When you go through the fire, meaning you're not gonna stay there forever, you are gonna come out on the other side. Well, I'll start with a personal story of my, my own. Um, you may have heard me say before, we have six children, which they're all adults now. They're amazing, they all love Jesus. And I wanna tell you the story about our oldest, Shanna is her name, and um, she is a single woman, she's divorced. And let me tell you a little bit about Shanna. You all know her. Oh, she is precious. In fact, you'll see a picture of her on your screen with her three incredible children. And uh, Shanna married and her husband always had a hard marriage. Her husband knew Jesus, but he didn't really walk with Jesus. And so as time went on, after those three precious kids were born, um, he found somebody else. And he decided that he did not want to have a relationship with her. And so they divorced, he left her. And you know, the sad thing is those three precious, beautiful children, do you know, he hardly even has a relationship with them anymore. He has not seen those kids in four years. The youngest one, Emmett, is only 12 years old. And yet he hasn't seen his father in over four years. Um, he doesn't remember their birthdays really. Occasionally he'll text them. 
Maybe he will give them an occasional phone call, but for the most part, he has completely walked away from them. Um, the second son, um, Ethan, or the oldest son, the second child, Ethan, precious young boy, he was born with some physical things and has had many surgeries. Um, and he hasn't even helped really with many of those. He's helped a little bit, the dad, but not very much. And so our daughter, Shanna, who by the way, wishes that she could be here today, but because she's a single mom, of course, she works full time. So she couldn't be here, but I've got a message for you from her. She said, I wish I could be there, but if, since I can't, could you tell those sweet people in Iran, give them a message for me? So here's a few words from our daughter, Shanna. I'm gonna read them so I don't mess it up. Shanna wants you to know, if you're a single mom, that you are not alone. You are not alone. Jesus is with you. If you're in a crisis stage, Shanna has been in crisis stages, especially when her son Ethan needed surgeries. He's had many surgeries. When you're in a crisis stage, remember there is hope. You can thrive as a single mom. Even though you're in a crisis now, perhaps you can thrive as a single mom. She says, press into Jesus daily. That's where she found her hope. And Gina, as a single mom, I bet you found that as well. You were a single mom at one point, Candy. I'm sure you can relate to that as well. Two verses Shanna would like to share with you. Deuteronomy 31, six says, he will never leave you, Jesus. He will never let you down. Revelation 21, five says, Jesus who's seated on the throne makes all things new. All things new, even your tough situation, he can make new. Shanna says that life is 10% about what happens to you but 90% how you respond to it. Isn't that the truth? 90% of how we respond to it. We may not be able to choose our circumstances, but we can choose how we respond to them. And then the last thing that Shanna says is she says, you can trust Jesus with your future, with your children, and with whatever unknown that you are facing. She says, lay it all at the foot of the cross. Jesus is your answer. So Shanna is 40, and that is her story. But we all have a story, don't we? You all have a story. And I wish you could join us here in our pretty little family room, and I wish we could hear your story. But in the meantime, we want to share our stories with you. So let's start with Gina. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Gina, your story. Oh, I'll just start here. As a young girl, this may, I hope this makes you laugh a little bit, but I was never career minded at all. Just wouldn't, it just over my head. <laughs> all I wanted was to be like my mom. I wanted to be a, a wife, wife and I wanted to have to be a mother of children, raise them. And my favorite saying was grow old with me, the best is yet to be. I just thought that was Aww. my dream. Yes. You know, that was what Beautiful. I wanted. So I was unprepared for if that didn't work out. That's all I dreamed for. That's all I wanted. Um, after college, I, I was married, and then uh, we were married for 22 years. I have two boys who are now adults. And um, let's see, the thing is, when we first got married, pretty much right off the bat, I saw things that I had not seen before, unless maybe, truthfully, maybe a month before I saw it mm -hmm. and attributed it to maybe nerves or my nerves. Maybe it wasn't what I thought it was. But he had a really big, uh, huge temper. Mm -hmm. And it would be um, big and in your face. So I came from a quiet household, stern discipline, but a quiet household. So it's, it really, it scared me and it, it frightened me. Paralyzed you. So pretty much for 22 years, I lived on eggshells. And I learned a pattern that I, I think we can go, we're doing good. It's like two weeks we're doing good. And somewhere between two and three, for unbeknownst reason, it would fall apart. So that was pretty much how I, how I lived. Now then, I never thought for a minute that I had a reason to seek a divorce. So my hope was always in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I was a Christian mm -hmm. from a young age and I had that foundation, which was wonderful, but I didn't feel like I had an out. And um, anyway, so I always you know, was working towards that. Then I went to a counselor who uh, showed me the depth of God that I had never known before. Mm -hmm. When I went to her, I actually said, you know, God loves me, but he loves everybody. I sort of, Ugh. Yeah. Well, during that time of my life, during the biggest struggle mm -hmm. of my life, that's when I learned 
the intimacy that God had always wanted to have with me. Now, I had a relationship with him, but not like that deep, beautiful, personal, intimate relationship that the Lord wants to have with each one of you, no matter where you are in whatever circumstances mm -hmm. you are, whether it's divorce or any other circumstance, God is seeking you and wants a very deep and personal mm -hmm. relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of my marriage, I learned um, that he had been having an affair for three years. Mm -hmm. And then before that, a different one. But um, mm -hmm. even at that point, God had strengthened me enough to where I said, I will not be part of this. But I wanted it to still work. So I thought, this is my big, it's God that's going to turn this around. We're both going to come to Jesus, and this is going to be what turns our marriage around. Within about five months of him uh, assuming to be coming to me, I, I got uh, one of those like a, a voicemails on, the, on your machine, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he didn't realize it. He was having a conversation with someone. It recorded, and it hit. To, it came to me. Wow. So the Lord revealed yet another person five mm. months later. So that's, that was um, my marriage. So did I ever think that I was going to do that even in the midst of things? No, but that's what it was. But I can just tell you that, oh, right before all that happened, what I learned with my, uh, my friend that helped me so much, my psychiatrist friend, about God if it, I came to the realization, if this pain is what it took for me to know how much the Lord loved me, I even told my husband who was fighting at me at the time, I said, you know what? If this is what it takes for me to know the, the Lord like mm -hmm. I know him and he knows me at this, and I've experienced him, I would do this mm -hmm. and go through this all over again. Wow. So that was wow. my testimony, and I meant it from the bottom mm -hmm. of my toes. Wow. That part's beautiful. So. God redeemed, brought beauty out of the ashes. Mm -hmm. Even did. though you did divorce yeah. and yeah. even though he now has been remarried, yeah. God gave you a relationship with him that you never would have had otherwise. That's, that's redeemed very, it. very true. It's beautiful. Yeah, so the worst part for me wasn't the part that people always think might be. The worst part was all the agony mm -hmm. right. for the length of the marriage, not the culminating. Not the end part, but the uh -huh. whole 22 years yeah. part. Wow, so good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gina, for yeah, sharing your thank heart. You. Thank you. How about you, Lisa? What is your story? My story is that I had the label, have the label of divorced. Um, and I grew up in a Christian home, similar mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Never thought that would be my label. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I believed I had a masterpiece marriage. The man that I married, we remained chaste until we married, and we served in the church together. And... Um, Within months of our marrying, he lost his job. He decided that he didn't want to pursue more work. And after a couple of years of living like that, without seeking counsel from anyone, I just decided, even though no one in my family had been divorced, it was gonna be me. Mm. So I was actually the one that walked away. There was no infidelity or any adultery, but just uh, a selfishness. I believed Satan's lies, mm. that there was happiness and I decided to walk into, I think you referred to it as his playground at some point, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, was independently minded and did it. And um, yeah, so that went on for a number of years, and um, I actually enjoyed some of those freedoms, but um, always nagging in my heart because I did belong to Jesus was the uneasiness that I had walked away from the path that he had planned for me. And it was mm -hmm. uh, very uncomfortable. Um, so I had a consistent prayer through those years as I lived as a prodigal or a rebel from God, reckless, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though friends and family would try to tell me to come back mm -hmm. and to get straight. Um, I had abandoned that path and in the uneasiness that it left in me, um, the Lord was obviously his spirit was the one telling me that. And I had a consistent prayer. and <laughs> It was mm -hmm, very mm -hmm. simple. It was like, Lord, don't let go of me. Please, mm -hmm. please don't let go of me. Mm -hmm. And so Beautiful he, prayer. he did pursue me through the years. And mm -hmm. I think we may be going to talk about redemption a little later, yeah, yeah. but uh, there is some redemption to it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Lisa. Mm -hmm. How about you, Candy? What is your story? Wow. Well, you know, it's so interesting listening to Gina and Lisa. I could 
where all three labels of divorced, I don't know that you mentioned widow, but that is also mm. a label that I, that I have. And um, when my daughter was only a year old, um, her father, my husband, was killed in a car accident. Mm. And so obviously I was very young, I was only 26, and it was shocking, it was sudden, yeah. and it was very, very difficult. And I did not know the Lord then mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. didn't have a relationship with him. And made a lot of mistakes during those those years. And then when she was four, I, I married an, a man that I thought for sure I was gonna be with the rest of my life. And after 11 years of marriage, um, he decided he wanted a divorce because mm. he was seeing another woman. Mm. So now, not only am I single with a, with a baby, I'm now single with a 15 year old. Ugh. And she's, she's crushed. I mean, she's, her life has been really, really hard mm -hmm. because she lost two dads. She lost two fathers, one right. that she never knew, her biological father, but the man that, that I was married to for 11 years, he loved her. He treated her very well. And he even adopted her. He wanted oh. her to have his name. He adopted her. So that was, that was without a doubt the most difficult part for me and was, part was part of your journey. trying to raise her alone and, and, you know, love her through these very, very difficult times. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's one thing when we have our own pain, but it, isn't it another yeah. thing when we have the pain of our children? I would much rather hurt myself than I would watch mm. my child suffer. And I'm sure you all feel the same way. Yeah. Oh, you know, I always say that when someone shares their story with us, we are walking on their holy ground. Um, these are your most tender parts of your hearts that you've shared with us, with all the viewers. And so thank you, ladies, for sharing your pain with us. And a beautiful thing about Jesus is that he never, ever wastes our pain. He always turns it around and uses it for his glory. In fact, even uses it most often as a platform where we can love and serve others and point them to Jesus. And so that my next question to each of you is, um, I answer this either way you would like. Um, either one, how has God rewritten your story or how has he shown up for you? Mm. You know, answer either one of those questions. Who wants to go first? All of you at once. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's hard to really separate the two, but he definitely rewrote my story because he saved me. Mm -hmm. He came into my life. He came into my heart. And he saved me. Amen. And that changed everything. And was that be while you were still single? When did that happen? That happened during the divorce. Oh, okay. Because I was so lost. It was, it was really terrible. And I worked for a man that really gave me a great example of what mm. it was like to have a Christian home. Great. And not only did he rewrite my story, he wrote my, rewrote my daughter's story mm. because she's married two wonderful kids, her whole family follows Jesus. Mm, praise and God. so that's how also he brought that back together and what Satan meant for evil. God is Jesus used. turned around for beauty. Oh, that's wonderful yeah. candy. Yeah. How about one of y'all? Uh, I would, okay, so go back to you. I never wanted, I never was a career person. Yes, yes, yes. I don't yeah. know if you call this, but I was afraid of working because I'd never worked before. Mm -hmm. Didn't have skills, didn't have anything. So the, here's how God has redeemed things. I've been in ministry ever since. Mm -hmm. So that's 21 so years now. Wow. wow. And the things that I've got to see of God and the things I've got to hear about and watch mm -hmm. do are so meaningful to me, I can't even tell you. And the way that God redeemed something really big was the day your husband, <laughs> my boss, Tom Doyle, <laughs> walked right. in. Okay, first let me set this up. The weekend before, I prayed earnestly, Lord, I need to change. I need to change. What do you want me to do? Is there something you want me to do different? I prayed it, prayed it earnestly for the weekend. Tom walks in on a Monday or Tuesday. At this point, I've forgotten. What would you think about working for me? <laughs> and I, I was blown away because Aww. I had so much respect for yeah, him, and I knew how much he wanted to do. The jo joke of it was, as I said, well, you should just go home and pray about that because I'm not sure. Because uh, I just thought I didn't want to mess anything up. I didn't want to because I was used to messing yes. things up, right? Aww. So here's the thing, though. I went home, and the Lord said, 
you've prayed all weekend. What walked in the door? Oh, I mean, wow. that's how that's how specific the Lord is. That's and beautiful. this has been a joy, wow. a joy, a joy, a joy. And this is why I know all these beautiful that's women right. we all on this stage. Jesus together. And how long ago was that, Gina? Has that been 10 years? 10 years. Ten yeah. Years? Uh -huh. yeah. Look how God redeems you guys. We yeah. never know how he is going to answer yeah. the cries of our heart. Sometimes we don't even put the cry of our heart into a prayer. It's so deeply embedded there. It just kind of, God knows. And he answers in yeah. surprising ways. So yeah, mm -hmm. my husband, Tom, has been um, Gina's boss for yeah. over 10 years. And we're yeah. all in ministry together. That's how we're all great yeah. friends. So yeah. And well, one other thing I yeah. want to say real fast is the Lord has also just redeemed um, a friendship with my ex husband mm. and mm. i think that's a real redemption it's a gift so um i'm i'm thankful for that amen yeah. Yeah. amen lisa how about you i i was able to remarry and i'm married to that man now for the past 25 years and although i wasn't able to have children of my own um kind of messed that up i thought but you know what the lord um, brought mm. our grandchildren into my life their mother became mentally ill within the first mm. uh, year to two years of the first baby's lives. So at 38, I became a grandmother <laughs> and a mother sort of <laughs> for about five years. And that's the way he brought mm. me back to himself was wow. he said, you know, these kids need to know me. Mm. So as infants and then toddlers wow. and young boy and girl, they came to me with ch to, to church. My husband was not a believer at that point. But when he got a diagnosis of a fatal disease that would have killed him within three to five years mm -hmm. at that time, uh, he then began to ask me within days of the diagnosis, do you think God can help me? I'd like to talk to your pastor. And so he walks in dark. He walks out light mm -hmm. and the miracle of God oh. just showed up. Healed Steve. And these grandchildren are now 23, 22 years old and following Jesus. Oh, look at <laughs> that. So so I'm so undeserved, but so grateful. Aww. What a redeeming God we serve. What yeah. a redeeming God we yeah. serve. Yeah, Everything, all of the ashes, yeah. like you said, Lisa, I don't know, I don't want to skim over what she said, that you were never able to have children of your own. Mm -hmm. You thought you blew it, but mm -hmm. God said, no, I'm going to give you the gift of these stepchildren and these mm -hmm. grandchildren. You know, she doesn't use the word step. No. They are her children. They are, children. They are her <laughs> grandchildren. What a gift yeah, that is, Lisa. It is. That is a beautiful, beautiful I heard thing. something just today about the potter's clay. It's in Jeremiah. Maybe you all know the mm -hmm. actual Correct. chapter. But the broken pieces of, of clay, pot, the pottery, that a potter just tosses off to the side, those broken pieces, when she or he wants to reuse them, they just take all those broken pieces, they immerse them in water, they're rehydrated, and they can be formed into new pieces of pottery. So that's just like the Lord Jesus does with yeah. us. We're broken, mm -hmm. and he gives us his word. He brings Jesus into our lives, and we become something new. That's right. So. I thought that was so cool that, is that I heard so that beautiful, today. Lisa. Yeah. And there's another verse that says that in Christ, we are new creations. Mm -hmm. In fact, Nicodemus in the New Testament comes to Jesus. He's one of the religious leaders. And, and he says, what do I do? How do I come to faith in you, Jesus? And he says, you must be born again. It's that same mm -hmm. thing, being made new. And he says, wait a minute, I'm an old man. How can I be born again? I can't climb back up into my mother's womb. <laughs> no, spiritually, you can be born again. Spiritually, you can be that piece of clay that's rehydrated mm -hmm. and formed into a new creation. So that's yes. what God wants to do for all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, our time is getting short. I can't believe this, this episode feels like it's gone so fast. But one thing I want to turn our conversation around to is, yes, the world can throw labels on us. And when they put those labels on us, widow, divorced, divorced, all of those, uh, single, whatever that label is, it's like a heavy, burdensome cloak. We don't want to wear those labels. We never wanted them to begin with, right? But when we come to faith in Jesus, he gives us a new name, a new identity. And that's who we really, really are. And I want to read some of those new names to you because when we get those labels, that gives us shame. And shame mm -hmm. is like a prison. Shame is like death of a grave. And that's not who Christ is. As we just said, he's all about new life making us fresh and over again. So some of the new um, identities, the names that Jesus gives us are beloved, mm -hmm. chosen, mm -hmm. blameless in his sight, 
oh my gosh, I have sinned. We've all sinned. You've sinned because we live in a broken world. And yet we, when we come to faith in Jesus, when we're washed in his blood, he dresses us in new garments of glory and praise. And in his sight, we are blameless. It's almost like, here's me in my sinful state. I come to faith in Jesus. He washes me clean. He clothes me in new clothes. And so then when the Father God sees me, first he sees Jesus, then he sees me through Jesus. And he sees me as perfect and blameless in his sight. I'm not, but Jesus in me is. And that's who you can be. If you are a child of God, that's who you are. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus, let him fill that emptiness in your life. Let him wash you clean and you will be blameless in his sight. He will call you holy. And another word that I love that, that scripture says that we are his friend. Don't we all want a friend that loves us and accepts mm -hmm. us for who we are, not with the label that we carry? That's what Jesus has for us. Well, God's given us a beautiful promise to stand on in his word. And um, it's in 2 Peter 1.3. Does anybody have that verse, 2 Peter 1.3? If not, I can, I've got it written in my notes, but I'd rather have us read it from the Bible. One, oh, three. Gina's got it. Do you have it, Gina? Yeah. As his divine power has given to us all the things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Mm. That's beautiful, isn't it? So God can use you also to encourage others. Not only, you know, these women have all been redeemed of their situations. They've been washed, made new in Christ, but God's also redeemed their circumstances. And there's a beautiful verse, I believe you have it, Candy, in 2 Corinthians, that mm -hmm. talks about how we can encourage <laughs> others. Oops, she's going to turn to it real fast. <laughs> 2, 2 Corinthians. Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4 and how we can help other people in their pain. I'm sorry. We're flipping in I our Bibles ready for that. quickly. Second Corinthians Second 1, Corinthians. 3, and 4. Yes. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions, mm -hmm. so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? So friends, if you've walked through difficult times and God's brought you on the other side through, as we said from that verse in Isaiah 43, you can help others. I can't believe our time is over, mm. but can we each maybe say one sentence prayer for our friends, close in prayer? Can we do sure, that? Let's pray, sure. friends. Father, I just ask you to bless all of the widows listening now. Just let them know how much you love them mm -hmm. and how important they are to you, Lord. That's right, Lord. Heavenly Father, I lift up all those who are divorced mm. and I ask that they will know that there is therefore no condemnation mm -hmm. for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And may all those listening mm -hmm. who are divorced experience your redeeming, refreshing, yes, and rescuing Lord. power mm. in Jesus' name. Yes. Heavenly Father, I lift up every single mother to you. Um, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus, I pray that you would just be their strength. Mm -hmm. You would be their provider. You would be their hope. I pray that they would press into you and know you in a mm -hmm. very deep and intimate way and that you will walk them through everything they ever yes, need Lord. to walk through if they just turn to you. Mm -hmm. And Father, we pray for those who don't yet know you as Savior mm -hmm. right now in the quietness of their heart, or may they shout out loud, mm -hmm. Jesus, yes. come into my life. Forgive me for my sin. Fill my emptiness. I want to go to heaven with you one day. Mm -hmm. I know that you are Jesus, yes. Son of the living God. May they give their lives to you now. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank Amen. you, friends, for joining us here today. May May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. May the Lord bless you. Until next time. Thank you, friends. Well, ladies, 